Sunday processional. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are a mate to sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have done undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As they called our day and serve Christ and by his authority, I therefore give you all your sin, and I do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And we pray, almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Second chapter of Philippians, beginning at the fifth verse. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was born in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. And when Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. He was drawn near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet. He sent two of his disciples ahead, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, 
the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as Jesus had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as they rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had been saying and seeing. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you even know, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated for our hymn, and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. There are a couple of three of you here that actually heard me say a few words similar to this in chapel on Wednesday. And so I want to begin like I did then. Do any of you have a favorite sports team? Anybody have a favorite sports team at all? Yes? Go ahead. What is it? Oh, you like football, but do you have a team? Henry or Hank, whichever you want to be called, which you had your hand up. Do you have a favorite sports team? The Colts, okay, from a basketball or football perspective. I'm a Colts fan. Yes, Bodie? Illinois, Illinois okay. Uh, and we hope and pray they do well until they get to meet Purdue along the way. All right, yes, one more. Um, God's team. Who is it? God. God, it, it, be on God's team? Okay, that's really cool. I'll come to that in just a minute. Well, I have a favorite team, and they are the Boston Celtics. And I'm a little bit Irish. I'm not sure exactly how much, a little bit Irish. And I've been watching the Boston Celtics for 65 plus years, which means I'm not such a young guy. And I remember when I was eight and nine watching them on TV, and I actually wanted to grow up and be a Boston Celtic, but I ended up being really short, really slow, and couldn't run fast. And so I could not make it to the NBA. But I do want to tell you a story. I watched them one time, a really good team overall, won a lot of championships. But I was watching a game one time, and everybody was cheering. There's probably some green flags or green towels waving. And at halftime, the Boston Celtics were up 28 points. And everybody was really, really, really happy you know, cheering for the home team. Uh, guess what took place by the end of the ball game? They ended up losing by 11 points. So they went from 28 up to a negative 11, and guess what started happening when the final seconds were ticking off the clock? 
Remember they were cheering and all that during the first half? What did they, what did they do? They started booing the home team. Now, I would have never done that, but there were some fans there that were booing the home team. So they kind of went, our sermon theme for today is they kind of went from cheers to jeers. And that's really kind of what is going to take place in Holy Week. We've greeted Jesus, and the, other, the crowd greeted him with victory palms. That's kind of what it stood for. Sadly and unfortunately, because he did not come to be the king, the kind of king that they expected him to be, by the end of the week, they were actually booing Jesus and jeering him. And we know what happened. We moved from Palm Sunday to Good Friday. And there it is where Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. In fact, we'll get to Easter uh, a week from now. And a palm is a symbol of victory. You and I, all of us, have victory in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He has given us the victory over sin, Satan, death, and hell. We know that to be true. We know God loves us and forgives us. And so we get to go to heaven knowing that to be true. With that in mind, let's pray. Dear Lord, you can follow along with me. Dear Lord, the crowds greeted you with cheers. And rightfully so. But during the course of the week, they turned away from you. And ultimately asked that you be crucified. That is the mission you came on. Thank you so much for completing it and then rising from the dead that we might have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The story is told about a famous preacher a long time ago. Pastored a church and it was packed, it was filled each and every Sunday. In fact, people would walk, it's kind of the time period we're talking about, would walk from miles away just to listen to this pastor preach. And one day as the church was letting out, A passerby asked one of the parishioners why this preacher's message was so compelling. The response was, well, this preacher will take you up to the mountaintop, and then he'll take you down to the valley. He will bring laughter to you. He'll also perhaps bring tears. He will have you jumping with joy and then falling down on your knees in sorrow. By the time he's finished, he will always have you at the foot of the cross. And really, that's kind of where we're headed, aren't we, on this Palm Sunday? We're headed to the foot of the cross. And Holy Week is indeed a series of emotional ups and downs as we experience with Jesus and walk with Jesus. 
And we do move from cheers on Palm Sunday to jeers come Good Friday. And I would like for us this morning to focus on a few words from the Gospel of Luke. We read a few minutes ago. Uh, all four Gospel writers have words about the triumphal entry, but I would just like to focus on the words of Luke 37 to 42. Those are the verses. And uh, what I want to do with regard to that, kind of as an outline, I want us to first think about King, Jesus is King. To next, talk about peace, which he came to bring. To talk about also his weeping as he looked upon the city of Jerusalem coming to it. And then finally, I'd like to wrap up with these words about the donkey, the Lord needs it. And so that's kind of our outline for right now. Verse 37, as Jesus was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Indeed, over a three-year time period, crowd after crowd had seen Jesus do mighty, mighty works. His words spoke to the heart of people with power and authority, and they still do. His miracles were electrified. The deaf could hear again, the blind could see, the mute could speak again, demon possessed were set free, parents brought their children to Jesus to bless them over and over again, depressed spirits were lifted and made whole, hopeless hearts dared to hope again. No wonder no wonder the crowds were cheering for him and waving those palm branches of victory when he came into Jerusalem. But they were also cheering for another reason. Luke says, they say, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This side of that first Palm Sunday, this side of the first Holy Week, this side of the resurrection, all of us know what the people then did not know. Jesus himself said it was hidden from them. They did not yet understand. And what was hidden? Well, contrary to desires and the hopes and anticipations of the people, Jesus simply did not come to be an earthly king. That's what they wanted. He did not come to be that. He would later say, during the course of Holy Week, my kingdom is not of this world. And it is true, as the people began to realize this, they began to boo him. They began to jeer him because they were not, he was not what they had expected. They were, in fact, even offered the choice of whether to free a criminal named Barabbas or to free Jesus. They chose Barabbas and crucified Jesus. And many of his faithful followers during that time period simply ran away and forsake him. He was no longer their king. Once again, this side of that first Holy Week, we now know that Jesus is in fact King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he rules and reigns over all of creation. Revelation 17, 14 speaks very clearly about our relationship to the King of Kings. They, and meaning our spiritual enemies, they, our spiritual enemies, will make war against the Lamb. And those and the Lamb will conquer them for he is, in fact, King of kings, Lord of lords. And with those, all of us are called and chosen, the faithful to be with him forever. I have a simple translation for that particular passage. Jesus wins, and so do we. Jesus wins, and so do we. As I alluded to the kids, we have the victory 
over sin, Satan, death, hell, and the grave. And that is what Jesus came to do for us. And as in days gone by, some will come enthusiastically to Jesus, and then for whatever reasons, and many and various reasons, just simply walk away from him at some point. Some will actually uh, accept him very freely early on, and then again just step away. And others will continue to follow him faithfully unto life everlasting, spending eternity either in heaven or hell, depends upon our saving faith in Jesus Christ and being with him faithfully unto life everlasting. For only truly he can give us peace. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, he declared in a visual way that he was the Prince of Peace coming to bring peace to the people. In days gone by, you've heard this before, I'm sure, Generals and kings, if they were going to fight and go to war, they'd ride a war horse. But if they were coming in peace, they would actually ride on a donkey. It was a symbol of peace. And do you know what the first thing Jesus said to his disciples on Easter morning when he arose from the dead and stood among them? Peace be with you. Peace be with you, he repeated again. And so he speaks to us this morning. Peace be with you. Romans 5, I really like Romans 5, especially this beginning verse. Therefore, since you and I have been justified by faith, and I kind of interpret justified, therefore, since you and I have been declared not guilty of our sins through our faith in Jesus, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and access to our Heavenly Father any time we want to come in to his presence. Knowing that should at some point along the way bring a tear to our eye, kind of weeping with joy, if you will. And sometimes I know that I've had people talk to me about the Good Friday Tenebrae services, and uh, they'll share with me that they had tears in their eyes because of the solemnness of the service and what was taking place. Tears of sorrow, but I think they also ought to be tears of joy with regard to who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And our Lord Jesus Christ wept two times, at least as we know it in the Scripture, probably more. One was when he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And then he said, Lazarus, come out, and he did. Today we run into that second place, and the reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that they had, he had raised Lazarus from the dead. And now he rides into Jerusalem, and it says that Jesus wept when he saw that. He wept because he knew he was going to be rejected. He wept because he knew that the people didn't understand what was going on. He wept because ultimately, you know, some of these souls that were cheering him will ultimately be lost unto life everlasting, not in the glories of heaven, but elsewhere. And I'd like to begin to conclude by saying that Jesus still weeps today. He weeps with joy with those who are saved and on their way to be with him forever, but he still weeps with sorrow uh, as he thinks about all those people who continue to be lost in whatever way, shape, or form without the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'd like to conclude with the donkey. In fact, I looked at one commentator and he said, maybe this ought to be a donkey sermon uh, with the words, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. Certainly the Lord ultimately doesn't need any of us in one respect, but the Lord does need you and I to live our life in and through and for Him as we spread the gospel uh, throughout the entire world. And uh, close with a story, uh, Eric Little, maybe some of you might remember that name, Chariots of Fire, uh, a movie from some time ago, a real-life individual who actually won an Olympic medal. And he and his sister 
were going to be missionaries in China. And he said to her at one point in the movie, I'm not going to go into the mission field right now. I'm going to go to the Olympics. And she was crestfallen at that time. He sought to help her understand by saying, Jenny, Jenny, I know God created me for service, and I am going to serve him, but he also made me really fast. I'm not fast. I'm not called. I can't jump high. Neither can many of you, I would think, as far as the jumping high and running real fast anymore. But certainly, we can serve the Lord. And Eric said, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. When I run, I feel pleasure with the gift he's given to me and how I am using it. So, with that in mind, as we move forward, may you and I feel pleasure as we serve the Lord and share the gospel and know that he also takes pleasure in that which we do as well. In the name of Jesus, amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your heart and my heart in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Just before the prayers, I'd like to make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Anthony Montgomery, uh, a principal candidate, uh, was here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're in the process of calling a special voters meeting uh, for April the 7th, as I understand it, uh, in order to be able to extend a call uh, to him, and certainly a hope and prayer for that he'll respond in a positive to that call. The other thing is, I've been in contact and I'm talking to Reverend John Babaro, who will be here on August the 1st. He is now being re reunited with his family for the first time in three months in Boston. Uh, her family coming in from overseas to be with him. He'll be leading worship services there. And as soon as Holy Week's over, he and I are going to get, begin to talk about how we can work together to begin to move us forward and to be ready for his arrival. With that in mind, we pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, your son humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. Fix our faith upon his death for our salvation, enrich the proclamation of the gospel, and enliven your hearts to live out of this faith. And Christ comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. The Lord, uphold this world in your order, preserve the church and the preaching of your holy word against all enemies. Bless our homes that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray this morning that you would deliver many from their various illnesses and afflictions. We pray for Brenda Kinslow, Thomas and Vivian Neller, Charles Merkel, Rhoda Needham, Jennifer Oberly, Greg Prang, Gretchen Welk, Larry Faust. We ask, dear Lord, that you would be with them, give them courage and strength, and according to your good and gracious will, bring them to full healing. We pray in that same kind of way for Mark and Isaiah and Roy and Kathy as they have had some recent surgeries and difficulties. We also pray that they would come to a full measure of healing. And finally, dear Lord, we pray in great thanksgiving for what's going to take place later this afternoon. The fact that we get to uh, baptize Scarlett and Celeste and Priscilla and Francesca. We ask that you would be with family as we come to the waters of baptism. We pray, dear Lord, that these seeds that ultimately they would grow in that faith into life everlasting. In Jesus' name, Lord, in your mercy. Finally, dear Lord, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, 
Show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. three other prayers scribbled elsewhere, and I'm going to pray those prayers right now. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for my relationship with my friend Dick Lancaster and also his wife Beth. We thank you that they've had the opportunity just this past yesterday to celebrate their 50th anniversary. Thank you so much for those many years of life and love that they have shared with each other and their family. Continue to watch over, bless, protect, and keep them. We also pray for Anthony Montgomery, his wife, Jill. We were wonderful, they were wonderful to be able to experience and get to know when they were here. We rejoice in his gifts and talents and abilities. And we ask, gracious Heavenly Father, as we move forward to a voters meeting, that a call would be extended he would prayerfully consider it that ultimately, dear Lord, it would be our desire, but it's your will, that he would come to be our next principal. We thank you that we've already called a new pastor, Reverend Dr. John Bombaro. We thank you that his family has been able to come from overseas to be with him during Holy Week. Bless them and him as he leads worship in several different congregations. And I look forward to working with him and along with the members and the leaders of uh, St. James along the way as we prepare his coming. Lord, in your mercy, we would ask you to hear all these prayers. In the name of Jesus, amen. We arise.
Before the service of sacrament, let's confess our common faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death rose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup. After supper, when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Take, drink. This cup is a New Testament of my blood, which shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may his true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, keep you steadfast in your faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look with you on favor and give to you his peace.
couple of quick announcements. Other opportunities to worship during uh, this Holy Week on Friday, Good Friday, uh, there'll be a trade or service at Grace Lutheran Church, uh, south of town. Uh, seven words of Jesus from the cross. There are seven 20 minute segments. Uh, had a bit of scripture reading, a hymn, and then a short homily uh, by different pastors. Uh, I will be doing the second word. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Also an opportunity on Saturday evening, Easter vigil. A couple of congregations getting together again out at Grace. Seven o'clock Easter vigil service. Just a couple of other opportunities for you to worship during Holy Week. Uh, if there are no other announcements, let's go in peace and serve the Lord.